been asked to build an alder altar rail uh, 10 feet long. And in order to do that, they sent me a, a bracket that, that holds the altar rail at one end of the church, one side of the church. And um, uh, this altar rail, is, like I say, it was 10 feet long, so it couldn't be, we don't have a 10 foot lays, so it, we're gonna have to do it with a, a shaper. And in order to do it, we have to make our own knives for this shaper. It's an old style, what's called a slip collar shaper uh, head. So if the first thing I had to do was to get the diameter of the uh, rail and I measured across and found that it was about three and a half inches. So I started out, drew me a three and a half inch radius on the paper and um, made a piece of wood, plywood, to make sure that three and a half inches would fit into it. And it made, it was actually just a little bit smaller than three and a half, radius uh, one and three quarter, a little smaller. So I took the, uh, this plywood and made a template of what the knife should be with the, with the correct radius. Held it on the paper to make sure that the radius uh, of the p pattern would fit my, the radius in the, uh, uh, the brass ring. So then these knives, which fit into this uh, collar, have little bevels on them that slide up into, into the, the collar. That's how it holds it in there. But basically what I had to do was to, to take this um, template and make a magic marker and come around the, the template, plywood template, so that it left a mark on the steel. Then I take the steel and come to the grinder and actually, come on this side, actually uh, grind the steel to that mark that is made onto the, um, onto the, the knife blade. Uh, let me see if I can put my safety glasses on and I'll show you about what, what I had to do. With the mark on there, I just very gently Pull the radius all the way around. That put a, a bevel on the steel. Now, it took me a lot longer to do that. It, uh, it, it's a very time consuming situation, but you, uh, you grind the, the, the bevel. That's why this is on an angle. The bevel and the the radius at the same time. Uh, we had to start out, we couldn't got, get a full 16 quarter or a four inch thick material, so I, I had to start out with a timber. Come this way, I'll show you the rough lumber that we, that we actually started with. This, uh, this is a 10 foot, Eight, eight inch wide, 10 foot piece of oak, red oak, red oak. <clears throat> material. Basically what I had to do is to cut it, we had to re cut it down the, the middle to make two pieces. I took the outside piece, once I got it planed and surfaced to thickness, and glued that to the bottom side so that it wouldn't, it'd be this, basically the same color out of the same piece of wood. This is what I wound, wound up with. This is machined and the, and the glue, the piece glued to the, to the other side of it. Uh, and as you can tell, the grain pattern and the color match pretty well. Uh, if I hadn't done that, if I had to try to use a different piece of wood, this outer piece would have stood out um, a lot more, been a different color. So the next step is to actually set the shaper up and machine it, and we'll show you uh, the finished product at another time. Thank you. 
uh, we're now running the, the radius on this uh, ultra rail. We took uh, the square that we had and we knocked four corners off at a 45 just to give the shaper a little relief for the, uh, for the cutter to work. And now we're going through and we'll take off all four corners with the radius and, and create a, uh, the handrail. This is uh, one that has been finished. You'll look at the end of it and uh, go around on this side. The, uh, the rail is now perfectly right. Just like you turned it on the lathe. Thank you. Ready for a minute. <laughs>